everyone. Uh, so this is my first video in what will hopefully be a long running series. Um, so this first video is really going to be detailing how to create uh, an AX2012 R3, probably CU10, either development box or a single server box for a very small company. Um, ultimately, the, the aim of this box will be for to use for myself. So um, I'll be using it to invoice art clients. So we'll be primarily using the project management and accounting uh, professional services vertical within the AX. Uh, but this video is really just about setting up the box. Uh, so how to go through all the installation, how to make sure everything's running. And then, uh, so this series will detail the infrastructure, getting your boxes up and running to make sure AX works and compiles and it's all working really nicely. And then from there, we'll go into the configuration of the system, uh, functionality of the system. And uh, as we progress, we'll probably come into some more advanced features. Uh, since these videos are gonna be pretty long, uh, I'm gonna need some music to keep me entertained. So I'm just gonna play some music. Um, if you don't like the music, give me comments, give me suggestions, uh, but yeah, let's see. Let, let's see what you guys think. So, just gonna open Spotify. Here. Uh, I still need to take that. Off. So I'm just gonna play some reggae. This is a fantastic playlist over here. So Jacob Knoll is actually the son of uh, Sublime's frontman, uh, who sadly passed away. Um, the the father, but this playlist is fantastic. So if you're on Spotify and you want to check it out, yeah, that's a good call. So here we go. Um, I'll just put it softer so it doesn't drown me out too much. Okay, so I'm gonna use Azure. Obviously the traditional way of loading AX machines was on uh, physical bare bone servers. Um, we're kind of starting to see a shift away from that. Um, and that's due to the uh, Microsoft's big push with Azure. Um, you obviously you've seen Dynamics 365 and uh, Microsoft's big strategic push is really to get as many clients as possible onto um, Azure. So uh, there's a few issues running Azure um, and AX together, especially 2012. Uh, the, the primary issue I find really is uh, to do with AIF. Um, it's an advanced topic, so I won't really go into it too much. But uh, as we're probably digging a bit deeper in later episodes, you, you, you'll hopefully see what I mean. Okay, so we're gonna create a new machine. Um, now you can actually, I think they've even got an image over here, Microsoft. Um, but ultimately that's not gonna teach you how to install AX. So there you, you see, you can actually, if you're lazy, you can deploy Dynamics AX R3 directly from Azure. You can also do it from Lifecycle Services. Um, look, it, it's, a, it's a good way to kind of quickly bootstrap your your implementations, but ultimately it's not gonna teach you about the individual components within the AX. Um, so you're not really gonna become an advanced consultant or you're not really gonna understand the complexity of AX until you really start digging into, in, in, into how to install it. So I really think it's a worthwhile experience uh, installing AX from scratch. So in that regard, we're not actually gonna choose that at all. What we're gonna do is we're gonna install a SQL server. Um, so I like 2014, 2016 is pretty cool too. Uh, 2016 has got some awesome stuff with R. Uh, so R is uh, kind of like a, this uh, machine learning language, I guess you could call it. It's really for, for yeah, um, really cool, but kind of outside the scope again. So we're not gonna go for enterprise. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for SP2 standard, okay? So there we go. Cool, it'll come up, there we go. And we're gonna select that. And we wanna choose resource manager. So the classic uh, way of deploying VMs was pretty good, but resource manager is way better. It, it allows you much greater flexibility and so Definitely recommend going with Resource Manager. Uh, okay, so now we're gonna configure the basics. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this, uh, I don't know really, uh, let's call this, um, well my company is Kudu, so let's call this Kudu uh, ERP. Uh, and I'm gonna use my own username here, uh, and I'm gonna just set up a password. Uh, 
there we go. Okay, here's my subscription. Microsoft have been very kind and allowed me the BizSpark subscription. So big, big, big thanks to them for that. Um, and then resource group, I think I might have an existing one. Uh, so I don't. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new one and I'm gonna say this resource group is internal ERP. That way I can kind of track how much it's costing me, uh, what it's doing, if I've got my own resource group. And we're not in the US at the moment. Uh, well, not, not, not in a massive capacity. So we're based out of Melbourne, Australia. Um, so we're gonna choose Australia Southeast. If we're in Sydney, it will be Australia East. You get it. Basically choose the region that, that closely aligns to your geographical location. So Australia Southeast, we'll choose. Okay, excuse the horrible Christmas jingles. It's that time of year. And I have forgotten to update my Spotify subscription. Okay, so, oh, this is fantastic. Um, none of these are available. Okay, so I've had a problem with my um, Azure subscription after I was just praising them. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just choose uh, Southeast Asia. Um, it's not ideal, there's a bit of latency issues, but for the purposes of this demo, it's fine. Afterwards, once Microsoft sorts out my uh, subscription issues, I can move it across. So if I go OK, it should allow me to actually choose a virtual machine size. Okay, cool. So yeah, you get your pricing, right? So, I mean, if you look at this, this is actually pretty, pretty, pretty great value for money. 181 bucks for, 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 for that system is pretty cool. Uh, I normally go with the DS12 V2, and the reason why I do that is just because, um, yeah, it just gives me a bit more, 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 more speed. AX, as you're probably aware, if you've had any major dealings with AX, it's it's an absolute hound when it comes to performance. So uh, I set this up, and then I don't run it 24 hours, and then that saves me a bit of money, um, but also I get a good user experience, so I'm not constantly cursing so let's choose that one cool and yeah what it's going to do is it'll just create so it's quite cool so it actually creates all these storage accounts network all of the stuff under that resource group right so as that storage account grows and i start using more disk space i'll be charged more but i can keep track of those via that resource group so it's a great way of kind of you know kind of knowing how much things are charging you being able to quickly manage resources that are logically grouped together so yeah i think resource managers it was a really good improvement that microsoft brought about um i'm not going with high availability on this fancy stuff for now um so yeah just going to choose just going to go to the standards okay so now sql connectivity so this is really important right so if i wanted to say um let's say i wanted a web application to connect to that sql a power bi or something like that or or with even the dynamics uh, uh power apps then i would have to make that sql connectivity public right so if if i want to do it local it's only that vm that can access it private's pretty cool because that means if i ever extend my network topology let's say i add an extra uh, Active Directory tree or anything like that, um, then I can always add it to it. Um, I know I'm mentioning a lot of terms here, and if, if you're really a true beginner, I'm probably confusing you with some of the technical terms. So um, if you got any queries, hit them up in the YouTube comments and I'll answer. Um, otherwise, Kudu's got a, a, a subreddit. Um, yeah, so if you want to go to the subreddit, like I live, I, I'm always on Reddit. So yeah, if you need to hit up any questions, anything like that, Reddit's probably your best bet. Um, else Twitter, but yeah, I, I, I tend to get over Twitter. Anyway, moving on. Yeah, I'm not going to do an automatic backup. Check, that's what I was talking about earlier, our services, but I'm going to disable it. I think it's only really available, you see, in 2016. So cool. Good to go. Okay, now it's gonna, Azure is gonna run this validation and it's gonna do all this fancy stuff. Cool, we can also download that template and parameters. So this is really cool. So let's say for example, we're hitting up uh, infrastructure for a lot of clients. Let's say we're a consultancy firm. We can download that template and parameters and quickly spin up new machines based on that uh, as clients come in. Uh, yeah, so cool. We're not gonna do it for now, but we're just going to create the machine um so this is going to take about 10 to 15 minutes 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause this video and uh, once it's finished pausing, um, I'm gonna go grab a cup of coffee and then I'll come back and we can go through the rest of it. Okay, cool. Okay, so we're back. Okay, we're back. Um, yeah, sorry about that. A few technical difficulties. I'm still getting used to snag it. But yeah, you can see it's created the CUDA ERP. You can see already it's done some processing. So my CP percentage has spiked there. So that's obviously when it was creating everything. Just read, read and write is up there. And then the network in and out. So, so we're pretty good. So we can connect to it. Connect into it will download an RDP connection, right? So, the problem with this is, if you're not on a static IP, you're gonna have to connect every time. So, if you wanna just rather save this icon and distribute it to your Starfire SharePoint or some form of shared portal, you just wanna make sure that you set up a static IP. I'm not gonna do it now, but just for your reference, if you struggle with anything. So, I'll just click on that. Okay, not gonna ask again, couldn't be bothered. Okay. What I want to do is I want to make sure I use a different account. So I push in, what is that, backslash, and I put my name. So that's because this virtual machine doesn't have a domain yet. Uh, we're going to create a domain in the next step, but for now it doesn't have a domain. So let's log in. I'll click remember me, and I'll log in. I'm also going to say don't ask me again, and now we'll log into the machine. Okay, and here's our new box that we created. So I'm gonna say yep yeah to that. And there we go. So there's our, 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 our SQL Server machine. It's all working fine. I'm gonna stop it for now, uh, just cause this video is already over 10 minutes and I don't know, most people in modern society struggle keeping up their uh, attention span for a lot longer than that. So I'm gonna call it quits here. And then in part two, I'll go through uh, create enough uh, domain for this box. So our active directory, uh, and then from there we'll carry on into the next phase as required. Cool, thanks everyone. See you next time.